Whoa. So now we're gonna talk about uh, integers. We're also gonna talk about floating point numbers. And the first thing you need to know about that is what's the difference between an integer and a floating point number. And the integers, integers do not have decimals. Integers don't have decimals. Floating point numbers do have decimal places. So integers are also known as whole numbers because they're not fractions, they don't have decimals, there's no fractional, fractional element to them. So integers, no decimals, also known as whole numbers. And then we have floating point numbers, which do have decimals, and those are known as real numbers. And so maybe they're called real numbers because in the real world, we always, uh, we always get fractions of things. Like even my coffee here, there's a fraction of my coffee which I'll never drink because <laughs> it's down in the bottom there and it's got like the coffee grinds with it. So that's, that's the real world, it has fractions. I only drink a fraction. Even if it's 99.98% of my coffee, I still only drink a fraction. So integers, no decimal points. Floating point, they do have decimal points. That's the first thing. The second thing is when you come and you look at the language specification, you have here numeric types. Under types, we have numeric types. Integers and floating points are gonna be found down here. And when you click on that, you'll see a whole bunch of different options. Do you have to use all of these options? UN8, UN16, 32, 64, INT8, 16, 32, 64. The answer is only if you want to. <laughs> so if you need to specify an exact precision because you don't wanna waste any extra bits in your program because your program's gonna be scaling to billions of users and, uh, and an extra couple of bits times billions translates to terabytes of data that you gotta store, then you can be very precise and you know what type of data you're gonna store there. Man, choose a really small data type and only store that value there. Generally speaking though, the Go programming language was designed for ease of programming. Remember, efficient ex execution, efficient compilation, and ease of programming. So you can just use, with the Go programming language, int and float64, as you've already seen. And so let's just take a look at that in accent, action. You could even do it just like we've seen so many times before with the short declaration operator, right? And, uh, and I'm gonna do that as Y, and then format this, and then print out the, the values. And then we'll also print out the type. Cool, x, y, x, y, format, run. So uh, it automatically, the compiler figured out the type for us and it used type int and float64. You too, my friend, <laughs> can just use int and float64 when you need an integer, a whole number, no decimal points, use int. And when you need something with decimal points, a floating point number, just use float64. It's good enough for the compiler, it's good enough for you. So if you wanted to specify this with exact precision, and let me copy this code and put it into our course outline before I change that up. If you wanna, you see down here, I record this video once before and then thought I could say that better, and so I'm re-recording it. If you wanna specify yourself the type, we could do it like this, var x, <laughs> Uh, int, and then we could also do var y float 64, and here instead of redeclaring the variable, which would create variable shadowing, I make those an assignment with just the equal sign, so we declared the variable up here, it is of type int, I'm declaring this variable is of type int, and this variable I'm declaring is float 64. Now we're assigning values to those variables, we could run this and we're going to get the same thing. So I'm gonna copy that code and drop it into our course outline. And this does not run. This not, next example is not going to run. So I'm going to assign this value right here also to my x. And we'll just make it two to be different. And uh, that is not gonna run because I've tried to assign a floating point number to something which is only designed to store an int. So constant 2.34534 trun truncated to integer. Interesting, and it's throwing an error because it's realizing I didn't mean for that to happen, so there's some kind of logic thing, logic problem going on with my program, and the compiler's prompting me to figure it out, saying, figure it out. You're trying to store a floating point number where an int belongs, and you shouldn't do that. And notice that it sees this as a constant. That's kind of interesting right, that any number you use in Go is a constant. So a literal value, that's kind of interesting. 
All right, so I needed that uh, code there where it doesn't run. I'll paste that into our course outline. That does not run. And then the next thing to look at is what's the difference between the U, like a U int. We look in the language specification, we have U int 8 and we have an int 8. So the U stands for unsigned. So if it is signed, it's going to go from negative, so there's the negative sign, to positive. And the positive is just presumed in, uh, in, our, in the numbering system. So it goes from negative to positive. It's got signs. If it's unsigned, it only goes from zero on up. It always stays positive. And notice that since we're using eight bits in each of these cases, we could store 256 numbers. Okay, so eight bits, two to the power of eight, eight bits, we could store 256 things. And uh, so that's two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. We could store 256 things. Why is it only going to 255? Because we're also including zero. So if we go to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there's 10. But if we start at zero, right, zero, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If we go from zero on up, our first 10 digits are taken up through nine, right? It's one less. And so the 256, when we start from zero, only goes to 255. Likewise, with an int eight, we store 256 values from negative 128 to 127. And if you wanted to store something in that, like if this was a int eight, and we'll take this one out, and we'll take out this one, and we'll take out this one, and we'll take out this one. And, uh, and if we wanna store, and we could do it like this too, we want to store uh, a number in that. Int 8 is signed, so it goes from negative 128. So we could store negative 128 there. That totally works. We cannot store negative 129. That's going to throw an error, right? And we could store up to, and let me just copy that 128. That was kind of nice. We could store up to, and we'll call this one int 8 in our course outline, int 8. That one works. This one does not. And then this one will also work. We could go to 127 and copy that. And this one will not work. So you can see there how we could specify pretty precise precision to uh, choose you know, what, what data type. What type do we need to store our data? How much data is going to be stored there? And, uh, and if we don't want to specify that precision, we could just use int or float64. Now the nice thing about int is that it is, and let me find the phrase here, there is also a set of pre-declared numeric types with implementation specific sizes. So uint is either 32 or 64 bits. int is the same size as uint, meaning it is either 32 or 64 bits. And a uint pointer is an unsigned integer large enough to store an uninterpreted bits of a pointer value. So these are implementation specific sizes. So the nice thing about using int or uint is that when you compile your program to run on a certain architecture, that, that, that compilation is going to determine, the compiler is going to determine, is this int going to store 32 or 64 bits? And so it will optimize how you've used int or uint for the architecture it's running on. Because a 32-bit machine will process 32 bits. That's called the word size. That's the word size of a, of a, of a computer. How many zeros and ones can it, can it process at once? That's the word size. And if the word size is 32, then it's processing 32 zeros and ones at once. So the compiler will make your int 32 so that those could all be run efficiently. That's mechanical sympathy. It's building your program for the machine it's going to run on to most effectively take advantage of that machine. And for 64 bits, if you have a 64 bit uh, machine, 64 bit word size, it'll make your int 64 bits. So you don't really have to worry about it. Just know that there's people that, that there are people, there were people, they, there are still people who are much smarter than myself who have thought about when you compile your program for a specific architecture, um, you know, let's, let's optimize it for that architecture and int and uint take advantage of that for you. Cool.
The last thing, two more things we'll talk about. I wanna just show you a little bit about the runtime package, which is pretty neat. And uh, so let's make a note here that we're gonna do that. Hey, it's not coming back, runtime package. And, uh, and then I also wanna show you uh, the aliases. So here are the aliases. So all numeric types are distinct except byte, which is an alias for uint8. Now remember a byte is eight bits, so instead of saying uint8, there is a type you can use, byte, which is exactly the same as uint8, but it's referring to a byte, which is eight bits, which is why byte is an alias for uint8. So from zero to 255, that's what the type byte is. So when you see slice of byte later in, in, in the program, you know, later in this course, and later when you're programming in Go, it's a uint8, and it's just eight bits, and that's a byte. And a rune is an alias for int32. Well, 32 means 32 zeros and one, 32 zero, zeros and ones. So a rune is a character. And uh, Go uses the UTF-8 character encoding scheme. UTF-8 was created by Ken Thompson and Rob Pike, who also created the Go programming language. It's the world's most popular coding scheme. We've talked about this. And it uses one to four bytes to encode characters, depending upon the character. So it can encode all of the characters of all the languages throughout the entire world because it uses one to four bytes. And uh, the first part of UTF-8 is ASCII, which is pretty cool. And, uh, but since it can encode up to, each character can be up to four bytes, you need, with four bytes, four times eight, you need 32 bits. And so for each character, and a rune is another way to say character, for each character you need uh, 32 possible bits. And so that's why a rune is an alias for n32. All right, so the last thing I wanted to say is just a little bit about the runtime package, because that's kind of fun. And I will also point out there's a link here to Caleb Doxey's online book, which talks about numeric types, which is nice reading. I love the way Caleb writes. He's a great writer. His book is fantastic. It's just fun, light reading and a good refresher if you've been into programming a long time just to hear the precision and the, 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 the brevity with which Caleb writes really clean, really clear, describing programming, descri describing the Go programming language. And uh, I remember from when I was in university as a student reading a book by these two people, Strunk and White, which was like some rules on grammar, grammar, and it said that good writing is concise. And Caleb's book is really concise, but also really nice reading. So take a look at that link. All right, so this is just gonna be kind of interesting what I'm gonna show you. So you could, you know, tune in, or if you're kind of tired, <laughs> go grab a beer or whatever your beverage of choice is. And uh, so there's this package, godoc.org forward slash runtime. And in runtime, there are some constants, and you could look through the index here and scroll down. But some of the context, uh, some of the constants are Go Arch and Go OS. If we look down here, we have constants. Uh, let's see, Go Arch and Go OS. And so even if I went to the GoLang Playground, and I believe I copied this one over, WF, and that is WF, cool. So now uh, I could come in here and I could print out from package runtime, and I could do Go OS. And I could also do Go Architecture. And we could see the operating system and the architecture that is running behind the Golang Playground. So it's running uh, SALT AMD64 P32, which means the pointers are 32-bit, but it's an AMD64 processor. So my ints should be an int64 when I just use type int. And you can look up what is the NACL thing by doing this, right? I'm just gonna copy that. Type programming, it'll bring up a Wikipedia page. NACL software is an abbreviation for Networking and Cryptography Library, public domain high-speed software library for network communication, encryption, decryption, and signatures. But the interesting thing about this is AMD64, P32. So all pointers are 32-bit, but everything else is 64-bit. That's the word size of this architecture running in AMD. CPU, and uh, so all of my ints will be int 64s, which is generally most machines today are 64-bit. So that's kind of fun. All right, so that's a little bit about numeric types, ints, floating point numbers, uh, uint, and uh, the int 8, 16, 32, 64, and the uint 8, 16, 32, 64. But generally speaking, ease of programming, short declaration operator, or just use type int or type float 64, depending upon whether you don't need decibels or you do. Uh -huh.